comfortable now? Very much so. In fact, mm-hmm. we're comfortable, we're cautiously comfortable. And I say cautiously comfortable because black people are aware that there is a deliberate movement to reduce our population and ultimately exterminate it from this country. A lot of us, even if we don't know the ins and outs of the eugenics campaign against African people, we know enough just by watching television and seeing what happens in the public schools and with prisons and with police brutality. We know that we are subject to a different set of regulations than white folk do. You know, people always talk about the law. Yeah, there's one law, but there's different regulations. See, white people have their regulations, and then black people have their regulations, you know. So as a result of that, we see that there's a differential treatment. So when I say that we're cautiously comfortable, it means that we are crossing our fingers and hoping that we are not the next one on the list to be inadvertently shot by a cop. We hope we are not the next ones on the list to uh, be arrested uh, fraudulently for drug possession when we didn't have anything on this. We hope we are not the next ones on the list whose child is going to be put in special ed unjustifiably or referred for psychiatric drugs unnecessarily. So we're crossing our fingers hoping we are not next. The ignorance of that position is ultimately you will be next because if any yeah. program that seeks to remove an entire population, sooner or later it has to get around to you. Like people ask me, they say, right. Brother Umar, why are you so strongly fighting this issue? You're okay. You have your education. You've never been to jail. Your daughter's okay. Why are you worrying? Because I am a black man. And no matter how successful I am, no matter how well-educated I am, the truth of the matter is the movement is to exterminate my people, which includes me. So even if they're not trying to take me out right now, sooner or later, they've got to get around to me too. So am I going to wait for them to come to me, or am I going to fight it where I am right now? Right. And, and that, that cautious comfortability, um, if there is such a word, I just created the word, okay. But anyway, right. that, that caution with the fingers crossed, um, it's stagnating. Very you much know, so. we're, we're not Very moving much. forward. And so, and see, of course, we need to talk and we need to have shows and we need to have film. But, but in your view, how would we begin to get past the fear, the lack of trust? The only way to get past fear is to face it. Uh, The trust is one of the ramifications or side effects of post-traumatic slavery disorder or the the deliberate teaching of inferiority. And so in order to get past that self-hatred and the inferiority, we have to engage in what I call self-directed mental reconstruction therapy. Mm -hmm. Self-directed mental reconstruction therapy. Now, to some extent, we're already engaged in that with the information. Your show, yeah. the documentaries, the books, that helps with the knowledge. But knowledge is only one part of the therapy, only one part of the treatment. People also have to honestly look at themselves and the beliefs that they hold about black people. This is going to be difficult. Black people are going to have to admit to themselves that they still feel inferior. They're going to have to admit that they do think white people are more intelligent. They're going to have to admit that they think white people are more beautiful. They're going to have to admit that they don't think black people are capable of self-government. You have to sit down, pull out a piece of paper, and write down every negative belief you have about yourself and your race. And then once you see what it is you think about yourself that is inaccurate, you then have to deliberately work on reconditioning your unconscious. And the way you recondition your unconscious is by consciously keeping negative content from coming into the mind while at the same time constantly introducing your mind and repeating within your mind positive information. See, the unconscious is the creature of habit. The reason why we hate ourselves so well is because we were taught that we were nothing for 243 years. So you can imagine that being told the same thing for 243 years, the conditioning is strong. So to uncondition, you have to do the same thing. Now, the good news is it won't necessarily take you 243 years to uncondition the self-hatred, but it will be extensive. The problem is we're still allowing ourselves to be subject to negative information, and we're allowing our children to be subject to negative information as well. So while we are engaging in self-directed mental reconstruction therapy ourselves, our children are being victimized by white supremacy because we're not controlling who teaches them, we're not controlling where they're taught, we're not controlling the music, the movies, or the information that they're looking at. So we're making slaves in our houses right under our own nose. So very true. I mean, we, we hear the... Hear people speaking about, oh well, racism is dead. Um, it's not even, uh, it's not even an issue anymore. Why That's are you making a big deal cult. about it? The cult, 
the cult of Obama's personality. Black people have created mm-hmm. a cult of Obama, Obama worship, Obama glamorization. I had an uh, intense discussion last night following a uh, parent meeting I had here in Pennsylvania with a uh, sister from the Caribbean who believes Obama is just absolutely infallible. And black people are politically ignorant. We are politi- politically immature. We're politically retarded. We don't understand anything about American politics. We don't understand anything about global politics. And I say that because if you look at the love we have for Obama, here's a man who's done nothing for black people ever in his life, and you have black people running around worshiping him like he's Dr. King or Marcus Garvey or Malcolm X. He's nothing like them. He, he has nothing in common with those gentlemen. Barack Obama is simply a pawn, a tool that's being used by the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the Federal Reserve, and the Bilderbergers to finalize the last stage of white supremacy, which is what they call globalization, to permanently make white people the kings and queens of the world and to permanently make black people the slaves of the world. That is the intent of globalization. Barack Obama has put AFRICOM in Africa, so we have military bases from the United States all across Africa, and that is being done in case Africans decide to stop allowing their resources to be exploited by Western interests. Obama will have the military there who will be able to subdue Africa. One of the first acts of office that Obama took was that he re- reversed the federal ban that prevented money to be used for groups in Africa that advocate for abortion and hysterectomy. This is Obama. He took money from historically black colleges and universities and gave it to white colleges so they could recruit Hispanics. Okay, so when you look at the, what he's doing, not forget what he's saying. When you look at what President Obama's doing, he's no better towards black people than Bush, Clinton, or any other president that we had. I don't think we have to ridicule him or hold him to a higher standard. I say we should judge him the same way we judge everybody else. He's a president of the United States. Every president of the United States, from George Washington to President Obama, was white, was a racist, and has done nothing for black people. He's no different. Mm-hmm. So we, we, we must uh, think clearly. And, yes, think uh, clearly. History, Not emotionally, history. but clearly. Right. So history does help you to see, you know, that there is a re- repetition of yes. uh, certain things that continue. Yes. I mean, I mean, how could one person come in and turn everything around anyway? You know, when you really think exactly. about it, for hundreds exactly. of but years. But he doesn't even have the intent. But see, we have to separate right. out someone who has the intent of doing something for us and someone who doesn't mm-hmm. even have the intent. President Obama right. isn't even interested in black people. He's not even interested in black people. We voluntarily decided to become his unofficial propaganda machine. You know, his other, all the problems we have in the black community, how in the hell can we sit by and say the president has no obligation to us for eight years, even though he's clearly advocating for homosexuals, he's clearly advocating for white women, he's clearly advocating for Hispanics, and he's clearly advocating for illegal immigrants. So black people are totally content with having the president take care of every other so-called minority group except their own. And we are in the worst shape. How in the hell can we stand by and do nothing? It's because of our sickness. See, a self-hating people don't have a problem with being mistreated. A self-hating people don't have a problem with being mistreated. A woman who is being domestically abused by her lover doesn't have a problem with being victimized because she believes that she is supposed to be victimized. So the reason why black right. people have no problem with Obama's neglect is because we have been taught that we are not worthy of any president's time or attention. Now, Omar, you brought out a word. Uh, the word of, of taking care of, that, that phrase, taking care of, we, it seems that we're dependent, you know, that the government is supposed to be for the people, and it seems that we're allowing things to, to be done to us instead of yes, us indeed. taking a stance and, and build, much. as you said, institution exactly. with power in back of it. Exactly. you got to have institutions. See, the United States government was designed for rich, white, property-owning men with power, and it is run by rich, white, property-owning men with power. People get into politics to protect their wealth. They don't get into right. politics to get wealthy. They get into politics to protect what they have, to reduce right. the government constraints on their ability to get rich through capitalism. Black people are actually trying to get a foot up through government. You can't get a foot up through government. The only thing you want from the government is resources and access to opportunity. Resources and access to opportunity. Black people right. don't get resources and access to opportunity from the government.